All right, barbershop conversations, man. We here with Roly, none other than Roly. You on the hot seat, man. You trending, man. You trending. Obviously, Floyd made an offer for you to fight Ryan Garcia, and Oscar Oscar came back by saying you're a six round fighter. It's no need. It's like a professional, I believe, playing like a high school kid or something like that. Yeah, he called me a high schooler. A high schooler, yeah. Uh, which... And I'm I'm actually quite good at baseball, so you know what I. I, I'm really, can you hear me? Yeah, now you're going to start that over. Go ahead, say it again. No, 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 I, I, I'm good at baseball. I'll that motherfucker up. <laughs> Do you think that was the coca talking or was that Oscar speaking in his real voice? <laughs> hey, I, I don't know the shit this nigga be on, but whatever that nigga's on, he be speaking out of his ass sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> That's real. He be speaking out of his ass. Oh, man. Uh, let me. Add, do you and Oscar have have history? Have w- w- when you turned pro, did you uh, did you just seek Floyd Mayweather because you was training in his gym, or did you go to Golden Boy and did they negotiate with you at all? No history no, at all. I, I've I've never attempted to negotiate with Golden Boy or, or anything. I, I don't think I would fit in over there. Mm-hmm. Why would you say you wouldn't fit in over there? I, I don't know. It, it pretty much just signed a bunch of little pretty boys. So. Mm-hmm. Speak. Yeah. Speaking of pretty boys, Ryan Garcia is 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 one of the reasons why we're calling, and you have sparred in the past, right? Yeah, we have. How'd it go? I beat the hell out of him two times, uh, two times, two different days, two days apart. I beat the shit out of him. Where and how? Details. Give details, because Ryan's going. Ryan's going to call me and want to respond. I already know. It's details in the doghouse. Oh, it was actually in. It was actually in Vegas. Oh, so that means you got 30 witnesses. I got I, 30 witnesses. You, there's a million witnesses now. I mean, sure, the video's on the internet. Yeah, we saw that. Yeah, we saw that. Yeah, we saw that. Yeah, uh-huh. there's a million witnesses. So. <laughs> How long ago was that? Uh, April 2017. Okay. And I've been calling him out ever since that day. Uh-huh. Do you think that he's a fraud or do you think he's just unfulfilled potential? I'm not saying that he's a fraud. I mean, to, to get to uh, whatever he is, 17 0, 16 0, what is he, 17 0? Somewhere in there. Somewhere in there. Uh-huh. All right, so to get to 17 0, I mean, you, 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 it, it takes some, some kind of, you know, I mean, you can get fed bumps all the way, but I mean, even if you feed a bump, 17 bumps, I mean, a bump you feed another bump, you know? Mm-hmm, sure. But on my level, fuck no, that nigga ain't on my level. Oh, he ain't on your level at all. Fuck no. <laughs> you don't think so? Hey, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm in the middle. So I'm, um, what, what makes your skills talent? Was it because you've been in Cuba, or your whole? F- I, I know you. I, I know the history of your family, man. You come from a family of fighters. You can fight on the ground. You can fight standing up. We all. I'm, I'm pretty sure people know that about your history. What makes you more special than Ryan Garcia? What makes more special than me? At the end of it, it's just balls. I have bigger balls than him, and I'm fucking like I. I don't give a fuck, you know. I really don't give a fuck. I'll fight. I'll spar anybody, and that's part of boxing. If if you don't have balls in the sport, then you're you're pretty much fucked, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He puts he, he puts out on me twice. He oh. puts out the ring on me twice. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, 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 let's back it up, because people are going to say he walked out on you. Were you guys in, in the middle of sparring, and he just stopped? We're, we're, we're like, come on, one more, one more, and don't want to do no more. How many rounds have y'all gone the first time? I, well, I know the doghouse is, what, five-minute rounds, six-minute rounds? How's it go? No, we're just doing three-minute rounds. There's, Th- nothing, there's nothing special. Okay, three-minute round. And what round did he say I didn't want any more? In the, in the first time, it was the fifth round and then no no it was the sixth round and the second time it was uh the seventh round okay and what did y'all agree to both times we didn't agree to anything but regardless i mean we're eight round fighters mm-hmm. I mean, well, he's, at the time uh i mean i was trying to i was trying to do eight i was trying to i always tried to do more than anything mm-hmm. you know i, I I don't mind doing eight. Two, I mean, I, I, be, I spar, I spar Rance, I spar Delamay. I do a couple rounds with them without mm-hmm. training or anything, you know? Mm-hmm. 
I'll spar, I'll spar whatever. It doesn't, it doesn't matter to me, you know. Mm-hmm. And well, regardless, reg- regardless, he came over there to Floyd's gym and called me out. I didn't go over there to call him out. He came over there to call me out. Mm. And he was a pro then, right? 2017, he was a pro. The pro. Mm-hmm. I, and I had one pro fight. I was I was fighting at one thirty. Mm-hmm. I moved up to one thirty. I, I moved up to thirty five after that fight. Oh, your confidence went sky high, huh? (laughs) He's like, I (laughs) mean, your confidence is. And he moved down from 35 to 30, and now he's fighting at 35 again. I think he's fighting at 35 again. Okay. I'm I'm 100% sure he he did his last two fights at 35. Mm -hmm. Now, with the $200,000 offer, did you think that he would accept it, or did you say, or, or did you think it was just like propaganda, promote, just to promote you? Do you think Floyd was serious? Floyd's serious. Mm. If, if, Floyd put, if Floyd put up the money, then then, then Floyd's serious. Floyd, Floyd ain't gonna front about some dumb shit like that. Mm-hmm. Floyd, Floyd knows I'll fuck him up. Floyd knows I already fucked him up, you know? Mm-hmm. And I really I really think that I really thought Brian was gonna take it, you know? But as far as what I see right now, I mean, he, he just, I don't know, he's just a bitch. Mm-hmm. Why is everyone going, why is, for real, for real? Last year was Devin Haney. Sure, right. sure. So, so we joined boxing to become a world champion, right? Sure. And to make a fuck ton of money, right? Absolutely. So he's getting offered two hundred thousand dollars plus a guaranteed title shot, and that pussy don't want to take it. Mm. You, you don't see something wrong with that. Maybe, maybe it's the opponent because I mean, apparently the boxer says I'm a six round fighter and I don't have no experience. And what, who the fuck is he fighting right now? Hmm. I mean, who, who has he fought in the past that's better than me? That 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 should beat the shit out of him, like me. Well, he doesn't really have any name opponents. He, he doesn't, doesn't really. His last opponent, I the last fight I paid attention to, he fought at StubHub Center and he beat like a. A former title challenger, world champion title challenger, but I don't think he was a world champion, you know. But 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 they brought him up in weight. They brought the kid up in weight. I think he was one twenty six, yeah. and they brought him up to thirty five. I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it, it, he's uh, and then the, the last dude he fought, who, who was that? It's something that just like I, I got it shouldn't even belong in the ring, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, and then uh, I think he's fighting another one twenty six pounder right now. Oh, is he? He's fighting in March, though, right? He's fighting March twenty something, yeah. March twenty fourth or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, one of those days. I don't even know. Why is everyone? Why is everyone gunning for him? It was Tank. It was first. It was Devin Tank. Now it's you. I'm sure the Baldera is gonna call him out at some point. No, 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 and, and everybody else, no, that came after me, after I exposed him. Oh, so I'm, oh, I'm, so. I'm the original gunning up there. So I'm going to be the motherfucker to get that fight. Uh, <laughs> so, hey, real. I don't mean to laugh, man. I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be, but. I, no, no, I was the fucking original. But why, but why is everyone, like, everyone wants to, why does he rub y'all the wrong way? Like, what, what does Ryan Garcia, I'm serious. I'll, I'll Mm-hmm. I think they're just doing it for publicity. No, I truly want to fight him. Mm-hmm. I truly want to fight him. These people are up. And I'm going to be the one against that fight. Mm-hmm. If that motherfucker stops being a fucking pussy, we're going to we're gonna set this shit up. We'll be a fucking We'll make a fight. Mm-hmm. It's not that hard. Uh-huh. Well, he was at Tank's fight, and, and I interviewed him for a hot second. And I see uh, I, I see him a couple times a year because I live in L.A. And... uh. Yeah. He uh he said that and he's actually re- real cool with me so he's definitely gonna respond to me he's gonna text me or something hit me in the DM a sudden and respond to this interview but he actually said at Tank's fight he went to Tank's fight he sat he sat front row and he says now that I saw Tank's fight I I think he's even easier I I believe he's even easier so if he's watched Tank wait 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 wait, wait, wait. he's saying that Tank's even easier. Tank's fight lasted like 30 seconds, but I don't know what he could see in 30 seconds, but... <laughs> I don't know what he... I, I, looked away, I looked back and the fight was over. I was like, wait, what the fuck? Mm. Yeah. So I, 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 he's just talking out of his ass, man. He didn't see nothing different. Mm. And so, so I'm making the assumption that 
you're fighting on a March 9th stands alone. There's no other fights here in L.A. You know, yeah, so no, no, it's in LA. yeah, it's in L.A. at the StubHub Center. So I'm sure yes. that he may be at your fight. So you, you know what you should do? You should actually send him tickets to the fight. That would be the move. That would be the move. Give him two tickets to the fight. He and his girl or he and his dad, you know, you, you actually just send him an invitation to come watch you fight because he saw Tank. He saw Tank's fight, you know, and and I'm, 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 I'm not that friend. I'm not that friend. <laughs> sure. uh, last time, I mean, I, I saw him at the fight, but I mean, I'll sit in front row. I'm not gonna waste my time with some with, with some with some chump, right? Uh-huh. So, but, but the other time, sure, I, I saw him at the Moon Gia fight. I just wasn't. I walked in, I cursed him out, and left. Oh, did you? <laughs> oh, so this is real beef then. This ain't just I want to fight you. This I legit punk that motherfucker. Define punk. I don't know what that means. A punk. No, I know what punk mean, but define. Tell us what actually happened. This is funny. I pressed him and then like he started shaking and he fucking went and hide behind the lawyer and I told the lawyer, hey, I I I shouted at the lawyer. I'm trying to remember what I said to the lawyer. Mm hmm. Now. Okay. Tank said, Tank says, I, I, I think I had a, thir- I, I did. I had a 30 minute interview with Tank and Tank said, uh, that's his pay-per-view fight. He's saving Ryan Garcia for his pay-per-view moment, you know? And, uh, if you knock him off, you, you're hurting the pockets of another Mayweather promoted fight, promoted fighter. Yeah. Y'all, y- y'all, y'all are really, really trying to get at Ryan Garcia, man, for real. It's like, I mean, he he does have a name cachet, especially here in L.A. You know, I'm sure he can sell 5,000 tickets if he fights. You know what I mean? I'm not sure he can sell sell anything out, but he, he definitely has a pulse here as it relates to selling tickets, though. I would say that. Oh, oh, oh no. I, I heard he sold out an arena that every ticket was like 7 bucks. Yeah, 7 to $10. It was affordable because it was the... Uh, I'm not excusing him. I'm just giving you the facts. It was the night before... Uh, Triple G and and, and yeah. that, so 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 you ha, you kind of got to make it affordable because people were paying to see Triple G the next day. I'm just stating the facts. I'm not choosing the side. Yeah, that's practically free. You're right. That's practically free. You're right. You're right. I'm pretty sure half the tickets were given out for free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They do that, especially on a night like that, and it was cold that night too. So uh, uh, let's move forward. So obviously, you train at the Mayweather Gym. They know your relations. The one thirty five pound division is that stacked. You said you, you sparked one thirty five pound division? It's stacked. For y'all young kids, it is stacked. Yeah, it's stacked. That's why I couldn't hear you cut out Yeah, you know, because you're gonna have Conlin moving up, you're gonna have Shakur Stevenson moving up at some I don't know if you'll be gone by then. Maybe you'll be at one forty. I'm uncertain of that, but you got the about you got the big about Darius brother. It is like some young kids in that division that literally can go. All y'all can go. Mm-hmm. This generation is this generation is gonna be beautiful, you know. Mm-hmm. It, it, boxing is beautiful. Mm-hmm. And and boxing. you and you sparred Devin. How'd that go? With Devin, it was like three years ago. You know what I mean? We went back and forth. Yeah, y'all yeah, both like, was young. Uh huh. Y'all yeah, both. It, it was. Uh, Devin gotten a lot better since I've gotten a hundred times better mm-hmm. since. I, a lot of people don't know this about me, but I started boxing when uh. No, I'm 17. Okay. So, I mean, I got a lot more experience now than mm-hmm. I had back then when I was an amateur, you know? Mm-hmm. Sure. I, I just hit, uh, in December, I hit six years of, of, of when I started boxing. Okay. Six years in. Okay. That makes you 23. I'm 23 years old. Correct. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and you told me before we started the interview that, that you, you literally just sparred Tia Fimo. In March of last year, how was that work? It was good. Tio Fimo's a great fighter. Mm-hmm. Tio Fimo's a great fighter. Uh, he's I wish nothing but the best for him, and uh, he's one of my boys. You know. Mm-hmm. You know what I, I? You know what I got from all y'all? Your father's in your boxing life. Devin Haney's father. I, I call him Mister Haney. I have I have a great deal of respect for him. Uh, and Tia Fimo Lopez. That I just had an interview. I was in. Fresno, I just interviewed his dad for the first time in Fresno uh, last weekend. Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, he, he talks that shit. Oh, he talks that shit. He actually shocked me because I was trying to be PC, and he took it to a whole nother level. And I was like, okay, we going to go with this. You know what I mean? But I'm going to be honest. Chill Fimo's dad is a great guy. 
that is the one of the best thing that's happened to boxing, honestly. He's funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he is. He's a good dude. No, yeah, he is. He talked that shit real talk. He speaks the truth and he speaks it from his heart. Yeah, he he, he got that BK in his chest. You know what I mean? And uh, but talk about the importance of your father in your life. You know, I I know your dad was a fighter as well, but speak to like all y'all young fighters got y'all dads in y'all life. I think that's pretty dope, you know, especially because it's become, and I'm speaking from me, I didn't have a father in my life. So, so if you don't mind, share the importance of your dad. Well, I mean, I said like, just as I mean, my dad's my trainer, I'm the best friend, you know, um, me and my dad, we're so much alike that, yeah, we just look at each other, we can't pat at each other because we know what we're already thinking, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's crazy. My, my, my dad's my best friend. Mm-hmm. How was that transition, though? How was that transition going from, like, child to man and your dad is your boxing trainer? So, like, l- l- like for me, I have a four-year-old son, right? And yeah. you get to the space where you maybe you get about 19, maybe you're 2-0 as a pro, maybe you're, like, 21, 22, and you can curse around your dad. Y- you can have, like, these visceral moments with your dad. How is that? How is that? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I, I, he just called me right now. What's that? I'm gonna have the voice I know. He's gonna call me again within two minutes. Uh-huh. Within two minutes, he's gonna call me again. Uh huh. Um, no, it's just uh, it's a sometimes Candy has dealing with him. That's all I can say. Oh, really? It really? Yeah. What's Talk about your Cuban experience. I, I was real interested when Francesca hit me. I was like, I'm real interested in what you learned in Cuba. Can you talk about that? Um, I, I trained with uh with a with um. I told you within two minutes you was gonna call me again. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's dad, right? Um. Well, when there was three weeks. I mean, I was there more for vacation, you know. Mm-hmm. I was there for three weeks, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I learned quite a bit. I mean, you know, the Cuban amateur style is, I mean, overall, the, I mean, like, it, it's the best, it, it's not the best, one of the best uh, boxing styles in, uh, for amateurs, you mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. And a lot of the transitions to the pros, too, you know? I mean, we have a lot of Cuban champions like Francis Lara, who got to the Bob for fight for one title, which I truly believe he's going to win. Oh, really? Um, you think he's going to beat Porter? I think he's going to be Porter. I think a lot of people are trying to out Uga. Oh, okay, well, we'll talk about that in a second. But talk about your, your Cuban experience. I'm real interested in that. Go ahead. So, I mean, I, I, even uh, I, I learned boxing here, here in, uh, in Vegas. You know, for the most part, I learned it here in Vegas. You know? uh-huh. And my dad's Cuban, so I mean, I learned a little bit of Cuban boxing from mm-hmm. my dad. But, I mean, there's a lot of Cubans in Vegas. I learned boxing from a lot of different Cubans. Mm-hmm. You know? So, me going to Cuba, it wasn't too much different. It was yeah. just me just training, you know. And I was more on vacation. Okay. You know? But every time I go, I do stop by the gyms over there and stuff. Uh-huh. I, I love going to Cuba. I go there, I go there often. Okay. Um, now, you said Ugas is going to beat Sean Porter. Now, I know you train at the Mayweather gym. You got Larry Wade is over there training, uh, Badu Jack. Uh, you got a whole bunch of... I, and Ugas has spent some, I, I believe Ugas has spent some time there, if not in the past. I'm not sure if he trains there now, but I know he's training out there. He's not there. training there. He's not training there currently. Okay. And, uh, but why is Ugas beating Sean Porter? I don't know. I just feel, I, I just feel Porter is not, not in this sport 100% anymore. And it, then, uh, the fact wow. that Porter doesn't have his dad this camp. Oh, he, oh, he's not. No, and the one that trains Porter to to be Porter is his dad. You know. Oh, who's Sean training with? I don't know who he's training with, but his dad's not not with him this fight. That's Ooh. what I've heard. Oh wow, I, I I had no idea. And and obviously we just talked about how important the dad is in your camp, and yeah. if, if his dad is I'm, his dad isn't there, or quite possibly it might be a blessing. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know. I'm just playing devil's advocate. Getting on my ass when I beat uh-huh. wrong. So uh, I think uh, you know I prefer to have my dad in my camp than uh-huh. outside of the camp. You know. Talk about you said. Uh, you said something about you don't think Sean is one hundred percent in. What does that mean from your? Because you're a fighter. I, I'm on the media side, so I don't really understand 
that that mindset as as from your from your vantage point. He, he's been through too many wars. Uh, uh. Like way too many wars. Uh huh. Huh. So so you so what does Ugas bring on March 9th that will give Sean problems? Yep. Um, he's a 12-time national champion in Cuba. Yep. Which I mean, it, to win 12 national championships in Cuba is, I mean, it, it's really difficult. It's really difficult, you mm-hmm. know, to win 12 amateur championships in Cuba. And then he won pretty much everything uh, aside from the Olympics. You know, mm-hmm. he won Pan American, he won Worlds, he won everything. So, I mean, th- that's a lot of experience that he has too. And then aside from that, he going in with hunger. Mm. If you have hunger, I mean, it, it, hunger is something that you, you you either have or you don't have, you know. And mm. I think it's, I think it's uh, underrated how, how how much hunger can impact you, you know. Mm, I got you. You know, I was I was actually talking with someone today, uh, someone in boxing today, and I said when when they announced the uh, the schedule, my immediate reaction number two. Was Granados and Danny Garcia on eps, on upset alert, and number one was Sean Porter and Ugas. And and why I said Ugas and Sean Porter was number one because I says Ugas is a very sturdy fighter with a high boxing intellect, you know. Yeah. And and I think that if if I think he can pose some problems on Sean getting getting on the inside, you know. Uh, maybe he, he, he sidesteps Sean and maybe he changes, I don't know, maybe Ugas knows how to change his jab, shorten his left hook or something just to distract Sean from coming in on the inside. But then you got the, but then on the flip side, you literally got a freight train coming at you. That being Sean Porter. So hey, I, I say like this, man, I, I, I've supported Ugas in the past. Oh, have you? Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you. You can he shed like, some light on that. He likes to fight, you know? He likes to fight. I was part of man uh, since before Trump Pro. Mm-hmm. But he likes to fight. I, he likes to fight. I've seen him spar. Uh, I saw uh, some of his camp. Uh, I guess I saw a lot of his camp, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, he likes to fight. Mm-hmm. How's his power? Fight, so. That's the one thing I said he didn't really have, but he kind of, he can kind of hide it or because he's so smart. You know, I, I've seen his last four fights. I was there for the Robinson fight. I was there in New York for his last fight. And I, 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 I see how he moves in the ring so I can see his intellect. I can see his, his wheels getting... I can see him thinking the next step ahead. He's literally thinking the next step ahead, honestly. He's, uh, his, power, his power is good, you know. He, he has a nice right hand. He has mm-hmm. a very nice right hand. Mm-hmm. But um, uh, he just has a, he has a really nice right hand, you know. And I, I think, I really think Ugas is going to do good, you know. And it's hard to tell from Ugas from sparring because he doesn't go into sparring to try to kill people. He goes in to try to work, you know. Oh, okay, so okay. He's a hundred different fighters. Like, you see people that are monsters sparring, you know. Mm-hmm. And then you see people that are, are, ter- and then they come out, they're terrible in the fight. And then you see people that are monsters in the fight, but they're terrible in the gym. And then you, you, then you get people, you know, very, very upset. I mean, then you get some people that are good in both, you know? Mm-hmm. Okay. Or one of those people that, because that, he's not trying to kill you in the, in the gym, mm-hmm. you, you can learn from him, and he, he takes the opportunity to learn too, you know? Mm-hmm. What he's did a you, completely different monster in the gym, in the ring. What did you learn from him? What could you take from him? It's hard. It's really hard to say. I, I learn. I learn from every fighter, you know. Mm-hmm. It, um, and then when, once you get to that level, you know, everybody has different tricks. You know, mm-hmm. I, I like. I got like Ugas his guard and how he walks people down. I really like how he walks people down. He does. He does. He does. I, I watched his last fight in New York. Even in the amateurs, he would do that. You know, you he would he would fight in the amateurs, walking people down. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. I saw him in the Olympics. I, I I did see him in the Olympics, but I didn't see him like in, in not regularly as an amateur. But I've seen him in the pro. I've seen him turn his whole career around because he had a he had a losing streak, and then he won about six yeah. seven in a row, and uh, now he's he lost, he lost to uh, two guys 
and then Amiri Mon. He lost the two other guys in the Mary Mon. Mm-hmm. And now he's just like, they, they put him up with a with a knockout artist his first fight back. You know, I, I remember I saw Ugas when he first came back. Mm. And that's when, uh, that's when me and him sport because we were both over the training with Salas. Okay, okay, got you. And, and ever since he went with Salas, he's been a hundred times better, you know? Mm-hmm. I think Salas was a great matchup for him, you know? Mm. So, um, I, I seen him. Well, uh, I seen him when he first came back, you know, and then they, they matched him up against a guy that was fourteen with thirteen knockouts, mm-hmm. and he stopped him. And then he stopped. Uh, like he, he just went on a straight a straight winning streak, you know. Mm. Yeah. He stopped a lot of them too. I think he stopped like four mm. or five of them. Okay, man. You- uh, you're going to pique a lot of people's interest. In, <laughs> you're going to pique a lot of people's interest in saying that because I would have this fight, honestly, 64 to 36 in favor of Sean Porter. But if Sean isn't accurate, you know, sometimes Sean isn't as accurate as as he should be sometimes. If he's not accurate with that right hand, I think he'll be accurate on the inside. But getting to the getting to the inside, I think, will be challenging for him. But I've seen a lot of fighters. I've seen Sean last fifteen fights, and uh, uh, people, people, uh, until they can feel the pressure, because he's literally a truck. No, he, he's legit. Yeah, he's, he's legit. He's literally a truck. He's a football player. He's a football player. I'm not gonna say he's a football player, but I, I've heard Adrian Broner say it a couple of times. But that force, <laughs> he, he he comes with a force. You know what I mean, and he's kind of athletic. You know, he got the he got agile feet, and he uses that to his advantage to get in on the inside. So, but I, I I'll say this: I will be and ringside. And he, has a, and he has a chin too. Oh, super chin! Oh, super! Oh, oh. He has, he has a strong chin. Danny Garcia and uh, Keith Thurman hit him with some shit that I was like, you're like fuck. Oh my! I mean, that left hook. That left hook by Keith Thurman. I I I I've asked him in interviews. How the fuck didn't you go down? How the fuck? And, and then Sean and then and then Adrian Brona hits him with a loopy hook and goes down. You get what I'm saying? Like, well, it's not really the the, the, the hard shot that makes it. The shot that the you don't see. Team. Yeah, the shots you don't see. He was so relaxed. He knew he was up ten rounds to one. He was going out to the twelfth round, just going to dance a little bit. You know what I mean? And he got caught. You're absolutely right. You know, and it was a top of the round too. You know what I mean? So, but yeah. So, so, so since you're good at breaking down fights, we might as well just go through them, Roly. Uh, Mikey Garcia, Earl Spence. Uh, 